Welcome back to Investment 360 to look at the European crisis, international markets and how they affect investments locally. We're joined in studio by Glenn Silverman. He's the Chief Investment Officer at Investment Solutions. Glenn, always a pleasure having you in studio. Thank you. And I'm hoping that you're a little bit more positive since we last spoke. Or it's very difficult to be more positive. I mean, again, if you're a bear, you're a bear, which I am. I think we're in a very long-term bear market, as we've said many times. And the reason I say that is because unsustainable policies have been put in place. And we know that. I mean, that's stuck. We can't debate it. I don't think anyone can argue against it. If we didn't have zero interest rates in most parts of the, the Western world and Japan, you would say maybe you had a normal situation. Normally, you'd expect an interest rate to be higher than the inflation rate. And obviously, we don't have that. We have LTROs. We have QE1, 2, 3s, and 4s. We have all wonderful acronyms that said the world's not a very normal place. So, But it's not the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world yet, no. Yes, <laughs> not yet. he qualifies it by saying yes. <laughs> but, but, I mean, if you look at the data, even today's, I thought the IMF report uh, on the World Economic Outlook revised up growth rates quite nicely. So it's not as if the IMF is becoming more concerned. If anything, the IMF is becoming less concerned about the outlook for the world economy. I struggle a bit with that. I mean, I just look across the world. Let's start with America. I mean, the news has been a little bit better. But next year is a very, very difficult year for the states, guaranteed, absolutely. It's only a question of how we can manipulate it differently. Why? Because we have fiscal drag. We know that if they do away with these tax measures that have been put in place in the Bush era, we have a reduction in US GDP between 1.5% and 4.5% of GDP. I've seen numbers that wide. I mean, only growing at 1.5% to 2%. So if we take off 1.5% to 4.5%, we're going to be back in recession again. So. I don't think it's going to happen and the markets are saying that, you know, the new administration, ever that might be, is going to have to do something about it to make sure that we extend some of the tax cuts. But again, these are, you know, again, the, the, the debt positions are very large and so the ability to be very flexible, I think, is, is, is not enhanced but retarded. You're saying that we're going to go back into a recession in the U.S.? No, what I'm saying is if they don't do something about it, if they allow all these tax cuts to end at the end of this year, they, they almost guaranteed will have to, will, will certainly go back into a recession. They're not going to allow that to happen. So the only question is how do we fudge these numbers a little bit longer to try to get what we need to be. What I'm saying is in the U.S. next year is a very, very difficult year. I mean, many of the commentators are writing about and talking about it. the market doesn't seem to want to look into next year. It's very, very far away. I think the time frame of markets has shrunk enormously, and we can see the events of the last few weeks, I think, speak to that. Europe, we don't have to speak to too much, but we certainly will. Clearly, their problems Before we move are on from the US. Long lasting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to extricate some positivity yeah, on geez. the show this evening. Glenn, what would have to change with the US for you to say, OK, this recovery is sustainable? Is it just a question of extending the tax cuts, or is it that you need something else that is not materializing at the moment to come through? that you would say, hold on, the US is maybe not going back to 3, 3.5% three yeah. growth, but can be sustained at around the 2.5%. I'd actually make it a hell of a simple. If Bernanke or anyone in the world remotely believed that things were normal, then I would be quite comfortable. In other words, if they believed they had the capacity to put short-term interest rates back to a level which is normal, I'd feel very comfortable. So inflation in the States runs between 2 and 3, and you want 2% real, so you need 4% short-term interest rates and we're at zero and they've promised us not only will they not rise for the next two years there's discussions now that maybe they won't raise them for the next four years in other words they're saying to you guys it's not normal we have a situation that worries us so enormously that we will distort the capital markets for as long as we need to to try and get risk are on you back, equally concerned about the emerging markets story do you see no. them as being intertwined or do you think emerging markets can while let's let's assume that your view on the u.s materialized let's yeah. assume that next year it's a real struggle maybe it's back into recession maybe not but it's a struggle struggle do emerging how do emerging markets fare under those circumstances so you asked two questions and i think the answer is kind of different do i feel as worried about emerging markets absolutely not the financial position is dramatically better in many cases of the world you have real interest rates and possibilities that interest rates in some parts could maybe still come down but either way they're okay South Africa we kind of hover around a zero interest rate real interest rate policy as we stand now but we don't have zero interest rates so I think that's quite important but they are intertwined I mean there's just no question about that and I think the reason the reason I said is I think capital markets are driven out of the major Western markets out of New York and London is when they panic they panic across the board when they sell they sell for us and they sell for themselves 
and we, we're impacted by it. So I think the economies are connected, but I think the financial markets are much more connected than the economies are. So how do you... Excuse sorry, me. Sorry, no, 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 yes, I am here. <laughs> I, I know that you may not see me at the corner of your eye, but okay. I am here. So I went to ask. I wanted to move to Europe because yes. you were going to give us a, a summation of what you're seeing out of that territory. Last night I was speaking to ABSA Investments. Yeah. They see a mild recession panning out in, in Europe. Is that a little bit upbeat for you? Yeah, I think that, that it also, again, Europe is quite a big area. We're talking about the southern part of Europe as opposed to kind of the, the, the middle and, and the northern part of Europe, etc. But, you know, path dependency is in play here. It's John Morden's term, and he talks about it a lot, where decisions were taken, for example, in Greece, which means you have no good choices left. You only have bad or worse choices. I mean, if you try austerity, which we think is necessary in many places to cut the spending, you slow the growth and your debt to GDP gets worse. You know, try to figure that one out. In my opinion, the only thing they really can do is write off debt. I mean, I think that is at the end of the day, which they've done in Greece. But immediately after writing off the debt, we have, you know, Greek bond yields back at 20% plus. So there's another write off coming. I think it's unavoidable, etc. And there are more to come. So what was fascinating about the last week or two is for at least three or four months, I've been very quiet because I've had to be because <laughs> things have looked better. But it's amazing the moment the bad news comes back, the moment the Spanish bond yield cannot hold, markets are down 10, 15, 20 percent. Sure. It happens quickly. And our point is these are on the table. They're not going away. They might go quiet for a month, two, three, four or five, but they're back on the table. And that's the environment in which we find ourselves. So it's not doom and gloom per se, but you're going to have to be flexible, adjustable, and it's tough. Okay, so let's just chat about that. Flexible, adjustable. How do you play this environment? You've got interest rates that are near zero in the developed world. So cash in those markets is not that attractive. You've got negative real interest rates on some of the government bonds yeah. in the developed market. So that's hardly attractive. Yeah. And you don't really, I assume, want to play necessarily in the equity space because you think that growth, there's not a great underpin to the growth story. So how do we play this? with great difficulty and we, we, this is always the discussion at the end of the day that is what happens when you have unsustainable policies in place i mean what what happens is we got into trouble they had to cut interest rates to zero they're forcing bond yields down whether those would naturally be there or not one is not certain but in the u.s clearly this QE at play, et cetera, and keeping these, these, these things down. And so they're forcing you to take some equity risk. On the equity side, I mean, I often made the point, we quite like the stocks. In fact, we don't look at stocks. It's not what we do. But we speak to our manager, yeah. Standard, and, and they love underlying companies, great balance sheets, management, cash flows. We don't like the markets. The top-down view and the bottom view, there's, there's a huge but amount because of Because if, if you look at the bottom up view, good. there is valuation. Yeah. There's, a, there's a valuation underpin. And if we look at the earnings, we were saying earlier on in the show that if you look at the earnings coming out today from... There were quite a few companies in the U.S. reporting. They were generally very yeah. good. It was robust. The market decided yeah. to follow that lead rather than looking at the patchy economic data that we're seeing coming up. I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do this fight that will take place between risk on and risk off, between bottom up and top down, where results come through and, and the market feels comforted. They look okay, it's, unless there's a guidance or a disappointment. Then that share gets trashed, but that's fine. It should be. But the markets are going to go between the top down concerns, as we saw last week, mm. Italy and Spanish bond yields and, and the bottom up good earnings. And I think that's the tussle we're going to see for some time. There is a way we do play it, and I'm happy to. Well, when you say flexible <laughs> and adjustable, is it also about being creative in this environment for, for asset managers? I, I think this is a theme that we've touched on yeah. before. And when we talk about creative, what exactly yeah. can people do? You know, not creative in the sense that you, you know, not creative not accounting, etc. Not cetera. looking at and, and not that either this time. No, I think at the end of the day, you're going to have to look a lot harder and work a lot harder to get the returns. The natural beta the natural return that would sit in cash is now gone at zero and in yeah. bonds is not there and the equities are going to work very very hard because you might like equities and buy the banks and i heard the cookie discussion a bit earlier and suddenly they down 20 in the space of a week and a whole year or two's gains disappear very you know evaporate and, and you've got to you got to adjust to that uh, what we're launching next week is a global dividend growth fund and we just think within equities that's the most attractive exciting space that we can find because our managers out there many global managers and local managers too are finding very attractive companies where either the mm. dividend yields are very strong and growing or if you add to that the the cash buybacks that they're doing with it and add the two together i mean they're talking numbers of like eight percent and i think that's a great way out of, to a play. Uh, out of a domestic portfolio no that would be a much more global portfolio mm. i think the domestic numbers would probably be lower 4%. than that 
probably. But you could probably construct a local portfolio out of domestic shares and get a dividend yield that approaches four and a half percent. And if you think where cash is, it's not a, it's not, it's really not a bad option. And then you've got obviously the benefit that if you do get some equity performance, you've got upside out of that. And I think it's not a, it's not a. It bad sounds like you're going to have a lot of fund go. managers following suit. Yeah, I think actually, look, we we following them rather than the other way around. So we we find managers who are doing exciting things, and then we put them together in a multi-manager portfolio. So the managers are ahead of us. I mean, they they've been doing this for some period of time. But but I think what you do do is capture a lot of the upside, but not all of it. But actually, a dividend growth portfolio protects a hell of a lot on the downside, etc. Because if the capital happens to drop by 10%, but you've got 4 or 5 mm. or 6 or 7 or 8% each year coming back put, in the form of dividends. Would you be putting property into that? So we've Listed had a, property? Yeah, we've had a very, very detailed look at property. It seems like such an attractive asset class because it's a hard asset which we like, especially in this type of environment, backed at the same time by these rental streams which are continuous, whatever. But the initial work that we're seeing says to us on the initial work, a lot of work there, is that equities just look better. You know, you get almost the same amount of risk in property, listed property as you do in equities, and slightly less return. So actually, I think if you want risk on, take equities, maybe the dividend growth equities, and otherwise take other things. Kevin, we're out of time Sorry before you ask another question. <laughs> Glenn, thanks so much for joining us in studio. Glenn Silverman is the Chief Investment Officer at Investment Solutions.